Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting September 12, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the town offices of Deerfield. Um, uh, the agenda for tonight is to review minutes of previous meetings, review the mail, take some public comment, and then we will go into a public hearing. The first, uh, we have two public hearings tonight. The first one is a site plan review for a large solar installation to be located on Pan Am Southern LLC property at 100 Railroad Yard Road. The second public hearing is a continuation of a public hearing uh, regarding a proposed Dollar General store, and that will open at 7.30. Then we have a request for comment about a proposed bed and breakfast at, at 194 Lower Road. We have an a and to review for 265 River Road, and then we'll take up any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting, and we will adjourn. Uh, members, have anything to add to that? Good, so let's review the minutes of the, we have, have, uh, we have two meetings in August, and. Um, uh, actually, I should say that we do have a quorum for the planning board tonight. Uh, Kip is here. I'm John, the chairperson. Rachel and John Baronis are here. Um, I got regrets from the other three. Roger, Max, and Paul all said uh, they're unable to make it at 7 o'clock. Max is going to try to get here at some point tonight. So let's look at the minutes for the August 6th meeting. I think the August 6th one, didn't we approve the... Um yeah. Special permit application. Okay, we did approve that. What do we think about the August 6th meeting? And it's I, I move that we accept the August 6th meetings as. I'll second the motion. Discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain? I abstain. We were not here, right? Yeah. I can't hear you. Sorry, we just uh, moved to um, accept the min minutes uh, into public record uh, from August 6th. I moved, Kip Kamosa seconded, we voted. Three zero one, one abstention. And uh, we should also say that Paul is usually the clerk and takes notes, takes minutes. But I will do so. Are you? Uh, I'm on. Doing that. Excellent. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right. The August twentieth meeting. If we can review the minutes.
the, the second to last vote there, it says Rachel moved, kept second in the motion to continue the hearing. I think it was to September 17th. Yeah, I think that's, uh, no, it's not till today. On so. September 12th. So. And it, it has been posted so for guess, the 17th, so. I guess we have a meeting on September 17th. Uh, would that change? I move to approve the minutes of August 20th, 2018. As amended? As I, I second that motion to accept those minutes. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose, abstain. Thank you. At this point, um, I know um, we should review the mail. You want to do that during the? I think the main thing is I just want to check if there's any mail concerning the things on the agenda tonight. Most of them are public notices from neighboring towns. Which are all very interesting. But we can take up later. So at this point, um, we like to take public comment. We have two or three minutes uh, at the beginning of each meeting. If uh, anybody, any resident has something that, uh, a question or a comment for the planning board on uh, something that is not on the agenda tonight, this would be the time to just take a minute to ask it or make a comment. Seeing none, we'll continue. We'll open the, um, the first of our public hearings. Uh, so I'm going to read the uh, notice of the public hearing that was printed in the uh, newspaper twice and posted in the appropriate places in the town. The Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on September 12, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, to act on a site plan review application and accompany, accompanying special permit application for a proposed ground-mounted photovoltaic solar project submitted by Environmental Resources Management on behalf of Mass, R Mass RE 12 LLC. Location of the property of the project is a 20 acre site at 100 Railroad Yard Road, Assessors Map 7, Lot 7 to 5, on property owned by Pan Am Southern LLC. Copies of the proposed project uh, applications are, have been available for inspection in the municipal offices during normal business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated. So at this point, if the applicants wouldn't mind coming up um, to the front table, we've got some microphones here. I just want to remind everybody that we have microphones um, at the front table and then up on, on the side here. And that Do you this, have cards? Do you have this, cards? Um, this hearing, this meeting is being recorded, so it's not just speaking to people in this room, but it's also speaking to people on TV, so that's why it's important to uh, speak in the mic. You might. Oh, uh, What if we added a second chair behind it? No, okay, I'll hold it. <laughs> so let me just uh, pull out. See, we don't need that. Uh, We've got copies for everybody here. You've got the original. This is for this one. Yeah, there there are bunches of these. So we received a uh, site plan review application. Uh, the name of the applicant is Nicola Canetta, Mass RE 12. Uh, mailing address is in Chicago. Uh, the property owner is Mike uh, Twiddle of uh, Pan Am Southern. Land surveyors William Walter PE, Alfred Benish and Company. And it's um, proposed Deerfield Solar Project will be constructed immediately adjacent to existing Deerfield, Deerfield Railroad rail yard. The proposed project will involve the installation and operation of ground-mounted photovoltaic solar panels that will generate approximately 
megawatts of direct current electricity. The proposed project will be built on 20 acres of land at the 100 railroad yard. And it looks like you've paid the fees and this has been accepted um, and you have copies and everything. So thank you very much. Thank you. So if you could just tell us who you are and uh, give us an overview of the project and then we'll uh, open it up to the public comment. Okay, I'm John Drabinski, I'm a partner at ERM. And I'm Kyle Purdy from ERM. Um, Thank you for first meeting with us today and reviewing our application. You have, you have chairs if you want. Okay. I can just stand get some work. Yeah. No, um, uh, what's your last name? I'm sorry. Purdy, P-U-R-D-Y. Yep. Thank you. So as you alluded to, um, we are here for Mass RE12. Um, the project proposes to build um, on this, install extra large uh, ground-mounted photovoltaic solar panels on this former Brownsfield portion of the Pan Am facility. Um, we're looking to develop that 20-acre portion dilapidated that's of, of much of a 101-acre parcel that Pan Am owns. Um, this project will generate 2.7 megawatts of DC power. Um, at initial design of the project, we actually split into, sorry, thanks, John split into two different solar arrays. So we have the northern and southern arrays. Um, and this completely avoids a large wetland area in between the two of them. So you see we have our, our layout mm -hmm. there. Um, the site will be accessed by existing gravel drives located off a of river road. Um, once the installation is complete, the entire site will be encapsulated by a security fence and these site entrances will have locked gates. Um, we are here today because we are requesting a use variance. Um, this is in a portion of Deerfield that's zoned as commercial two, and this is considered an extra large solar facility since it's requesting, since it's proposing over two megawatts of power. Um, we are also here today requesting a setback variance. So for the entire site. So to the north, um, of our development. So just, just to be clear, so the variance is because in C2, commercial 2, only large solar is allowed. Is that correct? Right. And this is extra large. So it's 2 megawatts is, is and under is large, and then over 2 is and exceeds, extra large. And exceeds 10 acres also. And right, exceeds correct. 10 acres. Okay. All right. And, and the setback variance is similar. So the setback variance, um, so the northern parcel of here is actually owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which is leased out to Pan Am. So even though it's Pan Am entities for both, it's two different property owners. And that northern boundary where we have our proposed fence is within 25 feet of the parcel boundary. So that's why we're requesting the setback variance because it's 100 feet according to the regulations. Um, so even though that whole entire area you saw from the aerial was all Pan Am rail yard, we still have to request that. Um, we have filed a notice of intent with the Conservation Commission. They are still under review. In that notice of intent, we included um, the stormwater calculations, design, and report. And we included that same stormwater data in the application we submitted to you guys. Um, that being said, I think it's important to note that this project is similar in nature to the six megawatt lake development project that was approved right down the road back in 2015. Um, the other thing I wanted to know is, speaking with the town, it's my understanding that it was a former proposal to put solar panels on the landfill. Our client um, certainly would like to be on board. If you guys would like to entertain that idea, they certainly would, help, would like to help create that generation for you. So I just wanted to get on record in saying that. And who's your, who's your client? Mass RE12. Is there anybody here from no, no. Mass or E12? What what kind of entity are they? They will be. They will be the uh, operating entity, so they will be uh, operating the uh, solar facility once it's permitted. They need a better name. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like I, that name. I don't generate the names. Sorry. <laughs> With LLCs, I mean. No, 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 no. But they're different than the lake. It's not yeah, like it's not the same. Not the same. They were also in Chicago yeah, with one of the guys. Yeah, I know. Chicago guys. There's no no connection between the two entities. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Sorry. All right. Keep going. 
So thank you again for meeting with us. And I, I know this is a large report, but I certainly appreciate you looking through it and entertain any questions or comments you may have. I know it's a lot to kind of digest. Yeah. All right, any um, questions? So I, I would love just a little further explanation about the lease from the, you know, the, the second property, the setback. So it's the, the property is leased from, yeah, if you could show us. Yeah. That would be great. So yeah, actually this sliver right here is still um, all from Massachusetts, East of Canada. So the setback I'm just not sure where the setback is. I guess that's what we're wondering. Is the, is the I don't understand that. setback that you want to, um, uh, you know, not meet the requirements on, is it on the railroad side or on the river road side? Right. Actually both. So we're requesting all the way around. All the way around our, this would be the first sliver that would be around our security fence would be 25 feet from that parcel boundary. <laughs> so the frontage, though, I think it's about 60 feet our grade goes up to, to the roadway. And then... Our side parcels up here, we're still actually within our parcel boundary because it goes all the way there, so there's no side there. Mm -hmm. And then side here, this is all really nice forested wetland that we didn't want to touch at all. Mm -hmm. So there's no setback there either. Mm -hmm. So it's really just front and rear. But we figured at this point, 25 feet variance for everything makes it a little bit easier. From our, from our required 100. Yeah. yeah. And I think in the application, I think you said you couldn't do 100. I thought... Uh, if we were to do 100 from yeah. that parcel boundary, there would be no... Option for option. option. Right. And then it's a little confusing, but from the parcel map, like, so the red is what Pan Am owns. Yep. And then the yellow is ah. what they lease out. So we have that little sliver in the middle where there's actual railroad tracks. Weird. This. The sliver is owned by the yeah. county. So that's lot seven five, and or that's lot seven four, and we're seven five. Got it. So essentially, the railroad owns uh, owns the red, but leases the yellow. So the lease yeah. is a ninety nine year lease. So it's it's the same entity, but it isn't based on uh, the, the uh, zoning. I mean, excuse me, the ownership. How long have they? I mean. Where are they in the 99 lease? 99 year lease. Let's see. It goes back to the B and M bankruptcy in the late 70s. So I think we got a long way to so, go. So so we got time. Yeah. We got time. Can you just give us a little more description about um, you know, we know the railroad is on one side, but on the river road side, can you tell us what what this is going to look like and um, you know where it starts and stops? And... So we have. Overlay of the entire site, and then we have broken into the northern and southern array. And you see that we have there's um, actually an existing loading dock that's on site that we're going to demolish and then bring to grade and then do our site access drive. So we have a site access drive that goes through all of it, so we'll be able to do operation and maintenance on the panels. That kind of cuts the site more or less in half, and all our development is away from River Road. And then we have stormwater features on both sides, um, vegetated swale on the river road side. On the inner side, we have some, <coughs> some piping. Um, but other than that, the really thing that, the only things that touch river road are the access points. Mm -hmm. So this is a, um, I went out with uh, Lewis from the Conservation Commission to confirm the wetland boundaries before our NOI application. And this road is still gravel and we're going to it's that, so we have like a little bit wider. Um, so we have that one access point, and then we have this access point for the southern array right here, mm -hmm. which is a, I believe, a dirt road right now. Mm -hmm. That you would in, you would then enhance. Yep. Yes. To, yeah. Yeah. Correct. Just for the board's uh, information, so I spoke to uh, the CONCOM about this, and they're planning on hiring a technical engineer to look at the. Yep. Wetlands, and often as we've done in the past, we said well, let's combine stormwater yep. with that. So the technical review will be done probably by the same person. 
Um, for both. As, as of a couple of days ago, they hadn't secured that yet, but that's what the plan is. Right, and we su would suggest that the planning board wants to hire a third-party consultant to review our application. Our clients more than happy to pay for that also. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have they walked it? Have, has it? have you done a? I've done a walkthrough with Lewis. With just with if Lewis. They have a third-party reviewer. I will certainly be available to walk it. Yep. Because mm -hmm. that would be. Kind and of if interesting. the board would like to walk, I'd be more than happy to walk with you. I think we'd like to probably. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'd like to um, open it up for public comment at this point. Um, you've given an overview, but. Um, Yep. Of course. Um, in our application, we paid, I believe, the $250 fee, and then there was a disturbance fee that was too yet to be determined. Yes. Like maybe a cap. So whatever that amount is that we determine, we just have a check waiting for you. That's all I wanted to add. Good. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> okay. Thank and you. with the solar, you know, we, we use the whole acreage. Even if you just kind of put poles or whatever, yeah. it's really you're disturbing the whole yes. the, the acreage, so that's right. what we'll end up right. calculating it with. So at this point, I'd like to take some public comment about the uh, proposed solar project on, on River Road. Yes, and if you could just come up to the mic and say your name and make your comments. Hi, I'm... No, it's not hot. The mic's not hot. Is it on? I don't think so. No. Nope. Nope. Dang it. <laughs> test, test. Wait. Wait. The IT guy. Can <laughs> the man behind the curtain has emerged. <laughs> there we go. There it is. Yeah, just going to get a little closer to this. I was working like two seconds ago. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it. We saw. I've just yeah. got to be taller. Yeah. Um, well, no, you can you point can. it out. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't turn it off. Don't turn it off. Whatever. Put your mouth right close to it, though. That's... How about that? Can you hear me? Anything on? You know what? I mean, come you over try here. This try this one. Yeah. On just try this. Try this right here. Just pull that one over to you. Yeah, yeah you, got, you have to talk right here. Okay. How about that? Beautiful. Okay. Hi, I'm M.A. Swedland. I'm a member of the Energy Committee, but I am not speaking for the Energy Committee. Uh, as many of you know, I am fanatically in favor of solar. I mean crazy in favor of solar. Um, but I had one question because I live on River Road, mm -hmm. and, um, and it, I came a little bit late, but it seemed to me that on the south end you were cutting down some trees that square, that sort of square place. Yep. Um, and my concern is that the railroad makes quite a bit of noise for residents on River Road, and those trees would be a noise buffer, and you cut them down, and the idling that goes on all night long with the, with the, uh, with the engines, and other, and, the, and the, when they make it up the trains, yep, yep. they're smashing into each other all the time. And I'm worried about cutting down those trees and eliminating a noise buffer. Okay. Okay. We can we can look into that. Yeah. And, and just so you know, the entire parcel will be the southern portion here will remain, so it doesn't, doesn't everything doesn't get cut. Just that small portion right here. Yeah. So I, I so somebody can probably. What was his answer? My answer was that the entire parcel will not be clear. Just the northern right. section. And, and we, I'm hoping that whoever, whether it's the Conservation Commission or you all or whoever, just takes that into account. Uh, I don't know whether that'll be, have, have an effect or not, but, but I'm hoping that it doesn't because I live two miles south and I can still hear it. And I think we could probably look at some uh, vegetation along River Road there because we do have some space yeah. before and the array is. particularly on the south, yeah. south yeah. boundary. So, so on this plan, we have the 100 foot buffer zone to the wetland. So you have the yep. tallest slope down here and that's the base of the hill. We pulled all the way back to be out of that buffer zone. There's a small little corner of it. But if you look at this, it's actually about half of that red mark. So our clearing goes to about where my finger is. 
So yeah. we, we realized that resource area and pulled our design back significantly to accommodate that. And then also the trees that align along River Road. Right. That's why we have our array of <coughs> tracks yeah. and the, hoping to maintain that vegetation. There, there definitely are some people who live on the west side of River Road, but the majority of people, as far as noise go, live south. Not sure at this time. <laughs> so that's a, a question that we all have is, so um, which way are the arrays facing, I guess? Is, are these stationary or mobile? I don't think it's. These would be stationary. Yeah. So which, which way are they facing? They're facing to the south. As, as you see the array, like parallel okay. lines here, so they're facing that way. Okay. So yeah, so I had a question about, you know, the trees along River Road, you know, could, could block some westerly sun. So I was wondering if you don't leave them up. Uh, I would say, is. sorry, Mr. Chairman, uh, based on the alignment of the array and the uh, vegetation along River Road, it doesn't look like the solar engineers think that's an issue. So we can look at that and uh, address that. So, we'll, well, well what, we're, what we need to determine is exactly um, what their proposal is for cutting down trees, every, every tree in that area, because each one can buffer from different directions can buffer noise, certainly. Um, so I think we really need some specifics on, on exactly what you're talking about there. Okay. And putting, um, you know, some solar fields you can put eight foot high evergreen, you know, shrubs or something to kind of camouflage it or something, but here it's different because it is, as, as you've heard, it's a noise uh, buffer for the railroad right. yard. So. And I, I think it's important to point out in our drawings, we have the silk fence line showing our limited Any other comments? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, could you come to the? Yeah, thanks. I have several questions. Good. <laughs> My name is Bruce Blanchard. I live at 778 River Road, right next to that thing we were just looking at. And I'd like to know where the access road is. Are you going to cut the trees down right up to my property? Could you get the bigger one there? There you go. Now, I see two heavy lines there on the north side. So, 778, right. I'm right next to you. Just move your finger three inches up, right? Yeah. Right there, yeah. yeah. So you're going to cut trees right up to my property line. It looks like there's a way uh, stormwater folks have a drainage swale going there. So it would be some tree cutting right to your property line. Yes, right to my pro okay, now what about that access road that's existing there? Are you going to fence this whole thing off? Uh, can I make a deal with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is so, on one Mr. Chair, is that the legal? <laughs> so that I can get to the back side of my property. So, so that actually is a question often we ask, have you talked to a butters at this point? Um, have you any discussion with anybody? We have not, but that's the whole uh, reason for the, the public yeah. hearing, to get the public input. Yeah. Yeah. At least that way it's transparent because yep. if we talk to a butters not in the public session, people wonder what's going yep. on. It's better to have it transparent. So we can have that discussion yeah, with you. One of my point. concerns is, you know, I look out my bedroom window in the morning, I might see a deer or a bear or a fox, a bunch of turkeys running around. Now I'm going to see 10,000 solar panels. So it's, uh, it's kind of problematic to me where I live. And I think the people around there, like this other person was saying, you cut down these trees and it gets loud there, wicked loud. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Did you have another question, or that was? Uh, yeah, how are you going to put these panels in? Are you going to pile drive them in, yeah. the uh, mounts for them? There, there are two types uh, in one part of the parcel. Is the mic on? People can't hear yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. In one part of the parcel, you will use a ballast, cement ballast to uh, mount them. The other parcel will be, be helical coils. They'll be uh, drilled in. 
Okay, so, so it won't be pile drive. No, it won't be pile. I mean, there will be some construction noise, but yeah. not, not a pile drive, not bang, bang, bang. Okay, yeah, because they put one down in Sunderland and the neighbors just couldn't stand yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> it was probably something that might have been rocked too, so. But okay, thank you. those issues we can address as we go to construction. Well, before yeah. we approve a site plan. Um, so yeah, so, so some ballots and, and some others will be yes. put in. How long do you anticipate installation construction would take? I would say from start to finish, six to eight months, something like that. Because there has to be some clearing, all the electrical work, hooking things up, uh, uh, paving, putting the drainage system in. So somewhere in that time frame. So ideally, ideally, it'd be nice to start in the spring, ideally. Yeah. Yeah, one, I don't know if you know, last month we had another solar array project come, and that was one of the questions of the neighbors is how many trucks, how often, uh, that kind of yeah, thing. We, we can address that. Yeah, yeah. And we can put uh, certain time limits on when things can happen. Yeah, and, and typically, you know, you'd condition the approval, you know, say construction from 7 to 4 or something like that. That's not a problem. You know, we would definitely abide by that. Yeah. All right. Other uh, comments? Yes, sir. Good evening. Um, my name is Bruce Hunter. I live at 103 St. Gully Road. Um, I have several questions. Um, I'd like to know what the review process is for, it, it was um, a variance in C2 or is it a special permit? We heard the applicant. Uh, we, uh, the applicant for, said uh, variance. Variance, Max, we got a seat for you. <coughs> Yeah. Oh, see, the thing is, I think we want to. Um, uh, so we, I'm not sure we've determined okay. that yet. Okay. If for site plan review, you have a standard to review by. <clears throat> I heard you say that you're going to have the stormwater, um, let the Conservation Commission do wetlands and stormwater together. We, we would team up with them on that. Team up with them. We'd probably use the same technical engineer. Okay. Um, and with the setback, is there any allowance in the regulations for a variance? That's something we're going to check. I, I'm not aware of it. Okay. And then um, w with the um, wetlands and stormwater review, I just want to make sure that the uh, proponent um, is aware and is following DEP's policy, wetlands policy 17-1, photovoltaics, solar array system review. You are following mm -hmm. that? Yes. And We're basically the, going by DOER guidance and uh, Mass DEP guidance. Mass so. DEP mm -hmm. policy 17-1. Yes. Yeah. It is very specific about tree cutting. Yes. Okay, thank you. So just to... Um, let people know. So this is a big project and there's lots of questions already. So um, I'd like to discuss with the board that we uh, bring in some expertise to help us with this. Um, and um, often we bring in someone from the FERCOG, Pat Smith, and um, so I'd like to put that out there that I think there's some administrative things to compliance things to look at, uh, just what we brought up here about variances, special permits, things like that. Um, and then certainly a stormwater uh, for the stormwater, uh, we want to bring in a, an engineer on that. Um, is there anything else we should be thinking about uh, for the for the tree cutting? That's that would go into the um, sound. You know, have have the that technical review look at that too. Yeah. Uh, and whatever inf information uh, Ms. Smith needs from us, we'd be more than happy to sit with her, have one-on-ones. We're completely open, transparent, and how we can expedite the process to. Get her the information she needs to give you guys the information you need to make a decision. And we'll have to do that. And I guess I, I'll ask you, just you've obviously looked into this more than we have. Yes. For, uh, what, what would be the procedure, do you know? Do we have a procedure for you, allowing an extra large in a in We a do seat? have a procedure, and it would be through the Zoning uh, Board of Appeals. And in fact, the prior uh, approval back in uh, 2015, the use variance was through the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, in that particular case, they did not ask for uh, setback variances, but there is other setback variances in town for other solar arrays, so there, there is some information there. Um, I would suggest perhaps 
talk to the building commissioner. He would probably be the best. And I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I don't want to do that. But he'd probably, be the, <laughs> he would probably be the. I'm sorry. He'd probably be the best uh, source of information for you. Yeah. But that's a typical uh, procedure under Chapter 40A and zoning how uh, you know a variance would be granted. So it goes to the ZBA. And this just uh, sort of so everybody knows we we did pass um, the bylaws for solar just a few years ago. We have sort of residential size, and then we have large, and then we have extra large, and um, there's a lot of change has happened even since we've done that as a town, and we're actually probably going to take that up as a, uh, with the planning board to look at the bylaws um, to see if they still make sense based on some new technologies and what other towns are doing. But um, So anyway, this will give us a chance to look at that. Yeah, and again, just uh, for your information, DOER has some great uh, okay. uh, Bylaws, uh, go by bylaws that other communities have used, and right. obviously you can uh, modify it to select uh, right. Deerfield specifically. Yeah. So I'd like to suggest that we get a, we continue this public mm -hmm. hearing um, to a later date when we have more information. Um, does that sound? That's good. Okay. So is uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, is there specific information you require from us, or do you want? Uh, At this point, we want to have the administrate the, have the review of your application and get some more of the um, they okay. get the find out uh, who's going to do the, the work for the CONCOM and have them do the stormwater okay. uh, okay. analysis as well. So, what we're, we're so, what, yeah, so we're going to need estimates from these uh, different consultants, peer review people, and then we want to put those, um, we'll, we'll tell you what the cost is and, and see if you're prepared to pay for it, and if you are, then we'll have them start work as, as soon as possible. The feedback we got from our client would be that they want to proceed. Um, we did advise them uh, in Massachusetts, very typical, this is what would happen. So they're prepared and, you know, uh, they're prepared to, uh, you know, uh, pay the cost to have the third party review. So. All right. So I think uh, just based on, we did this before, it takes about three weeks kind of to get RFQ out there and then um, have peer reviewers put in a quote and then we'll get that back to you. So if that takes two to three weeks, um, then they get started on the work, that work's going to take three weeks or so. So I would say we really want to have the, the next public hearing probably no sooner than six weeks from now. Mm -hmm. um, Is that right? That puts us out, that puts us at the... Uh, six weeks, why six weeks? Three weeks for... To uh, hire the, uh, okay, to hire okay, the peer okay, review okay. people and then have them do the work. All right. Um, I so do, I can maybe do you know, November. We have our, our normal planning board meetings are the first Monday okay. of the month, so the first Monday of November is a potential. I don't know what that is. that the I don't have day mine. or anything like that? No. Can oh. I have another comment, Mr. Chair? Yes. yes I do know the Conservation Commission is in a process, I believe, of hiring a third party in, uh, company. Peer review. And, and they're the same type of company, could not only do the stormwater, but the uh, Zoning applications and uh, the application. Well, we're likely to want to use our for okay, cog that's person. Perfect. So, um, and I think too, it would be good to perhaps make a time to uh, meet with abutters. That might be a good mm -hmm. a suggestion on our part to do that, so that you have an opportunity to speak directly with those people in your neighborhood, um, in the neighborhood of this proposed project. Um, and then I, I think also we would probably like to walk the site as well if you're available of course. for that yeah. once we're more underway. Uh, yeah. Anything else? <laughs> Got another public comment. Oh, so I'm suggesting we do, a, we continue it till it's a first Monday in November is November 5th. Um, and at this point, that could be the first thing on the agenda, so 7 o'clock on November 5th. And uh, we have a hearing continuation request that I'd ask you to sign. Okay. So we're all okay. okay with that. Got another I think we're trying to move on if you have a quick, yeah? Yep. Okay. Well, basically, by continuing means we're going to have oh, keep going. more opportunity. Okay. But this gives them more, op more I, opportunity. I was, I was waiting for you to finish talking so I could come oh, up, that's all. Yeah. So you have a quick Go. comment? Yeah. Uh, from what, my name is Rocky Foley, I live on South Main Street. From what I understand, most solar panels last like about 20 years. If you, if this isn't, uh, I'm planning on being in place in 20 years because it's not working out or anything like that. Uh, is this land going to be reverted back? Is that, are this, all this stuff going to get pulled out? Yeah. Uh, typically, uh, the material will be pulled out and that would be part of the site plan review approval. And sometimes the communities ask for a bond to make sure that if the, 
the applicant can't do the removal, that the community could do the removal. Uh, the company, we've done this a lot in Massachusetts, and typically uh, we give a bond to the community so it gets removed. But yes, so uh, in 20 years or 25 years, hence when the lease is expired, the property could return to uh, uh, commercial use and the railroad would be able to um, you know, do something with their property. So um, just as a side note, I, I think um, you know, to have this type of benign use on a commercial parcel is, I, I think, a benefit to the town of Deerfield because it's zoned commercially, and uh, commercial use has a lot of other things other than just solar panels. So just you know, as the community goes forward looking at things, it's just something to think about that not that the railroad is in the business of developing, but if something changes with transportation or there's a possibility that you would go commercial. So just something to think about. I'm not, I'm not trying to lecture. You know, Thank you. No. I, and we did have this opportunity to go through one of these with the other um, okay. solar project uh, in, this, in that same vicinity. So we do have some sense of how that the decommissioning process and what, what we need to ask of the company in order to assure that it's smooth yeah. at the and end. Two more real quick questions. How tall are the, is uh, the height going to be? And what type of ground cover are you going to have? On there'll the be panels? a specific solar mix under it. It's specifically designed for uh, uh, solar installations. They're probably 8 to 10 feet tall. And if you go down River Road, you know most of that elevation is up high. It's down a little bit low, so you yeah. may not even see some of the panels as you go down River Road. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so thanks very much. So we'll uh, be in touch. Um, and you want us to sign something here? Yeah, if we can sign this uh, request for continuation of the public hearing. So, thank you. On, um, so, this, the public hearing for the uh, proposed thank you uh, extra, extra large scale solar installation along uh, at 100 Railroad Yard will be continued on November 5th at 7 o'clock here in the town hall. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We got there? Perfect. Yes, I did, but you know what? That's what we need. That's what we need. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. I don't know. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. It's a recommendation that we switch the agenda and do a uh, an A and R before we open the the next uh, public hearing. Planning board members, Max, are you good with that? Or? Yeah. All right, we're going to switch. We're going to take a couple minutes and look at a uh, just an A and R that we have uh, came in. Is the applicant here? Dan. All the way to the side. Where's the, uh, the application here? Is there an extra? Is that one right there? Is that it? This is the plan, but I don't have the application. No, 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 that's... Uh, no, 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 You're right, you're right. You don't see that in that box? I do not. Is that it? Up, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait. 265 River Road, I guess. All right, uh, from, from Bonita Weeks, uh, 264 River Road, create two building lots. Could you let us know what? Uh... Oh, wait, no, I need you to sign it. So, no, have him sign it. Thank you. I need him to sign it. <laughs> No, it's but then it helps at the end if I've got because I need his address. He kind of whipped it off. As hard as it is for y'all to hear, it's also hard up here to hear. So. <laughs> That's 
Monday? What's that? Yes. It's going to so what I'm trying to thank you. We're always trying to figure out is what what is it what exists now. So this okay, is what so the fifth plus seven is what? It's gotta be the second week then. Five plus seven shut up. Thank you. See? Um, so the we need him to stop. Are they still there? Did those people leave? Yeah. Did those guys leave? See if you grab So they're trying to put a... Uh, Where's that So you so you're doing this. So you're creating this one. And this one. And this one's already done. And this one. This this is just not showing. This one. Yeah. Actually, good with that? Sure. We gotta get one other person to look at this and say they're okay. So we're free. We were gonna do it last time. And you were here. John, can you come look at this and we vote on it? I know. That's great, but now we do. How much is this two hundred? Oh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the plan as presented. I'll second the motion. Any uh, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? 401. Excellent. Pat, can you, uh, can we get you to come up? Is that Jean? The other? <laughs> check, check. Jean, are you here? There she is. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm like trying to, you are hiding mine. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to open the public hearing and then, um, Actually, why don't you guys pull you up here so you can hear the, uh, well, actually, you're going to go first, and then you go, and then the applicant isn't going to say much, and then, uh, and then we're going to open it up. All right. So, so it is working. 
All right. We just have to sign this, and then I'm going to go. Yep. I know. So actually, we were just going to, I was going to give a summary of where we're at and have uh, our two different viewers, because that's, that's how we left it off, and then ask for your comments. You said you might not have any. So that, that so just, say you that. just come up and say that way. You, want, you don't have to stay here. <laughs> um, I'd like to just announce that the uh, continuation of the public hearing for the solar at 100 Railroad Yard is going to be continued until November 12th. We were informed that November 6th is voting day, and this auditorium is not available. And now I hear other people have issues. Um, the state of Massachusetts recognized the 12th as Veterans Day. Yes, so that would be a public holiday. We cannot have meetings on public holidays. Why the 12th? Why not? The 12th? So we need to find another date in early November. Oh, fantastic! Um, thank you for that, Julie. Um, I'm, I'm not. I don't think we're prepared. Can we do that right now, you think? Or, well, did our friends leave? Yes, they left. Seventh or eighth. Wednesdays, we have a hard time getting quorums. Wednesdays are very hard. This was a very hard day to make, and I am not available very many Wednesdays. I'm not available the 13th. Thursday the 8th. Thursday's not so good for me either. Thursday's better than Wednesday. <laughs> All right, we're going to propose. Does anybody have an issue with November eighth? It's a Thursday night for the for a uh, public hearing continuation. I know we lost the people who were most most important, important on, that on one. the River Road project. All right, so let's propose it's the. Uh, the continuation for the proposed solar installation at River Road is November 8th, and we will check to make sure that works with the applicants. Great. Um, thank you. We just approved an A&R out on um, 264 River Road. And now I'd like to open the public hearing, uh, the continued public hearing for the proposed Dollar Generals. And I will read. So I'd like to open the continuation of the public hearing for the project that proposes the development of the property through the construction of a 9,318 square foot retail store with associated site improvements, including driveways, parking areas, utilities, stormwater infrastructure, and landscape. The plans will be reviewed pursuant to the following regulations. The first one is the zoning bylaw section 5400, which is the site plan review. The second is the zoning bylaw section 3120, which is a special permit for the reduction of parking. And the third is the stormwater regulations for the town of Deerfield. And this is for um, a proposed project um, on behalf of South Deerfield DG LLC for a site on Mill Village Road, uh, Assessor's Map 132, lots 29 and 30. Copies of the plans have been available at the town hall. Legal notices were published. This is a continuation from our August 6th uh, meeting, which was a continuation from a July 2nd meeting when we first opened it. So just to give a summary, so we've had at least three meetings, actually tried to have one in June as well, um, on the proposed uh, retail store on the corner of Route 5 and 10 and um, Mill Village Road. So we've had lots of public comment and we had lots of um, uh, letters. I appreciate all the people who wrote in and got on got their comments on file at, at last count this afternoon. We had 22 uh, written comments from, from people, mostly, I think, residents. And then we also have four uh, comments from town departments and officials. And those are on, on public record now. As the last meetings, we decided that um, it was decided that the planning board needed some expertise. And so we put out an RFQ, a request for quotes for technical review and for administrative uh, review and compliance. 
So over the past several weeks, we did that. We got some quotes. We hired a uh, tie-in bond engineering firm to do a, uh, uh, a technical peer review, and they have been able to, to do some of that. And we're going to hear that report tonight, as well as we hired the uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments, and Pat Smith is here to, to uh, give a report on the, some of the compliance of the, the bylaws. So I'd like to start with um, uh, Jean from Tie and Bond to give us a, a rundown of what your observations and comments are. We have this in writing as well. Um, then we'll have Pat, and then we'll open it up to public comment. Uh, then we'll ask the applicant for some response, and then we'll open it up to public comment. So, thanks. Um, for the record, my name is Jean Christie. I'm a project engineer with Tie and Bond down in Westfield. Um, as the chairman had mentioned, we are scoped with reviewing the technical um, aspects of the project in terms of the site plan design, stormwater design, and traffic. Um, as of today, our traffic review is not yet complete. We expect that to be complete by the end of the week, so you should have it very shortly. Um, but Can I just, uh, just let me add that, that you didn't get the, um, we asked for a full traffic study from the applicant, and they, we didn't get that until just the end of last week. Right, correct. So we, we had agreed that, that we didn't want to rush that, so that's fine. You should be quite closer to is this better? And yeah, no. right. You have you to put your mouth to practically right. on it. Okay. That's kind of awkward. <laughs> yeah, it's awkward. Um, so our review was a, you know, pertaining to the storm, uh, the site plans, and the stormwater. What I'm going to talk about this evening. Um, I did meet on site with the engineer um, about a week and a half ago. We talked about some of my initial reactions to the design, um, some of the bigger picture comments that I was going to issue so that they could begin to look at how to address them. Um, and then we do have a follow-up meeting scheduled for next week to hash through these and to come up with a, a plan to address them. Um, so looking at our, um, our letter dated September 7th, comment number one questioned if the parking area was designed to accommodate fire, you know, emergency access vehicles, um, assuming that parking spaces were full in the event that we're at capacity, and a fire truck needs to get there. Has the fire department seen this and commented? And I didn't know if the board had received any comments so far, or if a meeting had actually occurred with the applicant. Um, number two talks about snow storage. There's snow storage areas indicated on the site plans, um, one area of which is in the area of eight future parking spaces. And my question is if those parking spaces are needed and they are constructed. Is the provided snow storage on site adequate? Um, number three talks about some of the um, the this, this stormwater basin discharge goes right to the right of way. Um, I'm asking the applicant to look at alternatives for how that water is directed out of the basin versus directing it right to the property line, or if there's other alternatives we can look at. Um, mm -hmm. Number nine, I mean, I'm sorry, number four, um, talked about the landscaping plans. That was, um, the landscape plan indicates that there's a privacy fence and there's you know, sporadic plantings along that. I'm wondering if, you know, that a question to the board is if that's adequate for you, if there's you know, additional plantings you'd like to see. Um, looking at the technical stormwater report, there was a number of findings just for the real technical um, hydrocad piece, the actual analysis piece that I, I questioned when was the rainfall data that was used. Um, we've recently seen a slightly higher rainfall depths used, um, so we've been seeing a lot of that lately in what we're proposing and what others are proposing as well. Um, some ground cover and soil type of consistency questions, um, determination of how fast water gets from point A to point B, some real technical stuff. Um, I expect that we'll be talking about that next week in a little more detail. Um, another question was number five in the stormwater um, section about those eight parking spaces, again, the eight future spaces, if that infiltration basin had been designed to include that area, because it was not clear to me. Um, the next few comments, six, seven, and six and seven, really, are more along the lines of the what's happening in the mass DOT right of way. That's a, it's a large right of way; it's very wide. And my understanding is there were some railroads that were abandoned, and that's how they acquired the property. Um, there's some, you know, the, the proposed 
road or the proposed driveway um, is new and pervious in that if there is mass DOT going to require any infiltration or any stormwater management and there's nothing proposed at this time um, my recommendation is really just to meet with them talk to them and see what kind of mitigation they may require they may not require anything um, DOT yeah but but the town could I mean we do right yes but we, we can't, the town can't require them to put something on, not on their property. That's the challenging piece with that. So it's, you know, we need to get DOT on board with what's being proposed, make them comfortable with the design of it. You know, they will be interested in that, so. Um, I did have a question about the soil and the storm and the um, seasonal high groundwater elevation in the basin. Um, you know, that's, that's a discussion point that I think that I'll have with the applicant's engineer um, just to be sure that we are providing the right separation to groundwater, make sure that, that what we have over on the other side of the site where the septic absorption system is versus what's on this side of the site at the infiltration basin. Um, and then I looked at technical compliance with the Massachusetts stormwater standards. Um, as you know, the stormwater, there's ten, 10 stormwater standards for Massachusetts, but then there's a whole handbook that goes with it that, due to, to further detail, lots of little bits and pieces to, to comply with those standards. Um, there was a few things that I found, none of which were, um, I guess, incorrect. It was just a little, just a little bit more information on these things. So. Um, one pertained to the stormwater operation and maintenance plan um, and a couple of small things that were needed just to fully meet that standard. TSS removal was another one, but I understand that that's not going to adjust you know, the treatment trains of the design. I think it was designed appropriately. Um, so that was the nuts and bolts of it. As I mentioned, we haven't completed our traffic review, but we'll be doing so. Um, and I do look forward to meeting with Bowler next week. Thank you. I just go back to point eight there um, sure. about the groundwater. That's been a lot of issues about it. And right now, there's been soil borings done, but not test pits. So you're right. recommending they do test pits. Right. The test pits are different than a boring in that you can look at the soil modeling and you can actually really see how the layers are, are look in real life versus in a bore. So. Do you have a suggestion about how many test pits or locations of it, these it, test pits? In the stormwater management handbook, in the Massachusetts stormwater handbook, there is a requirement for so many per square foot of basin bottom. So mm -hmm. as long as we comply with how many that requires. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's a big issue in Deerfield, especially mm -hmm. South Deerfield. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure we know what that sure. water table is, uh, where that's at and how it's going to drain. Questions from the septic design? Our yeah. review was well, non-specific to the septic design. Septic design. I think. Well, they, they did test pits for the septic, which is on the other side of the site. So. Just to jump forward, that that's a uh, question that our uh, board of health has. <coughs> we do want to. We we do want more information on on the septic. Um, so. All right, good. You'll stay around after. I'm sticking uh, around. Okay, yep. thanks. Pat, can you come up and give us your report? So just so uh, the um, notes from Ty and Bond were distributed to the planning board um, and were in the town hall earlier this week as, as our uh, Pat's notes, which do you have copies? Oh, you Yes, I brought, oh, good. I brought copies for you. Thank you. Thank you. So again, for the record, my name is Pat Smith. I'm a senior land use planner at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, and I uh, work to provide technical assistance to the Deerfield Planning Board under a contract with the town. So they have asked me in this case to do a, a review of, in terms of the regulatory compliance, Jean is obviously the technical expert, but I go through proposals and uh, just look at the details and see if they are in compliance with the various elements of the zoning bylaws and in terms of the stormwater bylaw, just what they need to submit if, they, if it has been completed, if there's any 
things that I note there. So uh, the report I do is, is fairly long because I include the sections of the bylaws there so you can see those. I only put in the ones that I think there are issues with. If you don't see a section of the bylaw listed there, it's because I deemed to be, have, have been met. But still it ends up being long. So rather than go through it uh, page by page, I'll just give you some of the highlights. And then uh, if there are questions subsequently, we can, we can get into some of the, the weeds, literally. Um, so in terms of the site plan review, one of the elements of that is uh, that the, uh, the proposal should be in uh, the similar character and scale to the buildings in the vicinity. I think in reviewing this plan that it doesn't meet that particular standard at this point in time and that there's room for the board to have a discussion with the applicant of ways in which the, uh, the appearance of the building could be altered in order to make it uh, more, <coughs> and more consistent with the area around that particular building and, and, and the town as a whole. So that's uh, um, one major one. There are a number of things that are not included. There's been some discussion about the septic plan. It is only referenced on the plan as I have never seen an actual septic plan. I'm not sure the Board of Health has either. So again, that is something that has been raised by a couple of folks that uh, would need to be attended to. There is, in addition to um, not necessarily showing how fire emergency vehicles are going to be handled there, as has already been mentioned, there uh, is no provision for uh, showing actual water service, where it's going to come in, and, and how fire protection measures would be included. I don't see any hydrants on the plan or specifics. So, I'm sorry, I'll try to pull it in closer. So I was just saying that... Um, the, the plans, uh, in addition to not discussing whether there's enough room for a fire and other emergency vehicles to turn around there, it also doesn't show specifics of the water service or fire protection measures that would be included. There, uh, we, we had, I had already said before that, that the, there is no septic system plan that has been provided. There is um, a landscaping plan that's very straightforward. It, as has been mentioned, it provides intermittent trees along the northern side. Um, and there, uh, the trees and the other plantings that are provided are, are not native species. Given the fact that you now on this property have no mature vegetation, it's an opportunity, I think, for the board to have uh, a discussion with the proponents of how they might revegetate their portion of the property, uh, both to screen better for surrounding properties, to uh, make it more visually appealing to people that drive by, could be native plantings, could be pollinators. So it could really um, try to turn that situation around to improving the property. So I think the landscaping plan is something that, that you could look at. Uh, the, the location of the fencing and the screening, I think there's already been some discussion about those things being moved. So um, that, again, is something that uh, sh should be looked at in terms of whether it adequately screens or maybe even blocks use. I believe that there was one of the abutters that had indicated that that fence might block their view. So some discussion about how that all screening and fencing uh, goes in and where it goes it would be appropriate. The uh, signage that is being proposed is not in compliance with the bylaws. The, the, uh, the, there's a sign on the building and then one at the entrance onto the property where the driveway comes in that is a freestanding sign. Neither of those signs meets the 32 square foot requirement and the freestanding sign is uh, proposed to be 21 feet where your bylaws uh, have a, a, a height limitation of 15. So uh, you'd need to discuss the signs with them because they're currently not in compliance. Um, there are, in addition to discussion about the landscaping, the, the, when we look at the stormwater plan, the uh, best management practices that are being provided, the stormwater management system itself is largely a pretty traditional pipe and pond system as you're discussing landscaping and maybe Jean has some other comments she could provide in terms of uh, impl implementing more low impact development or lid elements to your stormwater management plan, which could include things like rain gardens, which themselves would then have a double purpose of improving the landscaping and serving uh, to uh, infiltrate the stormwater in a, uh, a more natural way on, on the property. The, um, the, o &M, the operation and maintenance plan 
uh, did not provide, there's a couple of elements of it that were not included. Uh, typically there is a map showing all those best management practices. Each element of the stormwater uh, installation would be included on that. There uh, are, is usually discussion about easements. We've discussed this elsewhere to allow the town to get in and do maintenance if needed. So that can either be a separate easement or a condition. I believe that's how you handled it before. You put that as a condition in your permit. So that, again, is not there. Uh, and uh, while they provide estimates of the cost of individual elements to it, there isn't an overall annual estimate. Uh, so that would be helpful for, for uh, continuing operations there. There, Say that again, I'm sorry. The estimates of? Of the cost of the maintenance operation. So they, they, the operation and maintenance plan needs to list the things that have to be done to clean out four bays, Got to keep the system in operational, you know, it, it, so that it can operate at its highest efficiency. Mm -hmm. And so they, uh, there, there, are, there is information in there about what should be done and then what, uh, what intervals and some uh, individual costs, but it's never pulled together in an overall annual estimate. Not a big deal, but just something that is required and is helpful going forward. There are really no elements of the plan that address pedestrian safety. It's a difficult place. There really aren't sidewalks around here. Um, but nonetheless, th there may be room to have some more discussion about, you know, uh, uh, bicycle safety, pedestrian safety, um, to just consider that there are other users of the roadway and other people are going to get there besides folks in cars. And I think that's the, those are the main highlights. You will see other things in here. They're, they're largely things that can, can be dealt with very easily. Um, minor missing elements that uh, we'll, we'll discuss and, and they can, the applicants can, can add in and, and deal with, I think, fairly simply. Uh, we do, I also have an appointment with them next week to sit down and go over it. They're very proactive in uh, getting in touch with me to do that. So uh, we, will, uh, we will have uh, further discussions on this and I'm sure they will be making uh, the, some of these changes in the, the next round of the application. So any questions? Thank you, Pat. Quick questions from planning board members? I will say that uh, thanks to Diana Schindler, who uh, compiled all of the citizen uh, information, comments, and so forth, in addition to all of the plans and everything, I've also had the opportunity to review all of those materials. And there is a lot of very helpful information in there, including some uh, photos from other Dollar Generals, uh, I believe in Vermont, where uh, the design was altered so that it was more in the vicinity, which I thought was very interesting and something the board might want to look at uh, further. Thank you. And I'm glad you mentioned that because, yeah, the, all the correspondences, the comments that have come in have been sent to both of the peer review folks, and so that helped them focus on certain areas. And I think you've heard some of the reports. Water is a big issue. As I said, traffic we're going to get to in another meeting. Um, and then some of the characteristics of the site uh, issues came up a lot. So at this point, I guess um, I'd like to have the applicant um, respond. I, I do, uh, I just would say that it was, um, I found 23 things that they did not meet in your memo. Some might be minor, but that's an awful lot I found. And so I, I just want to put that out there. That's, that's, that's more than we usually get. Um, that need to be corrected, I guess. Some of which I'm, you know, we got to see what the next revision is. So, um, so I guess I'd like to ask at this point: Do you have any revisions yet, or do, would you like to make some comments based on these? Uh, For the record, Austin Turner with Boulder Engineering. Um, appreciate the both reviewers' comments. I thought they were very, very thoughtful and thorough, and they've been great to work with thus far, and very proactive, as was noted, in reaching out to us and us reaching out to them to set up a meeting so we can go through this. The idea of that meeting would be to go through each of those comments individually, um, get collectively aligned on our course of action so that it's as efficient a process and everybody feels like it's been uh, you know, worthwhile. So uh, while there are a number of comments in there, it's not unusual. And I think, as was mentioned, none of those to us uh, are striking us as you know, the proverbial showstoppers, so to speak. Some of those are highly technical. Some of those are. Um, preferences in terms of additional landscaping and things like that. And 
Um, as to the septic system, that's being designed right now. We've been actively coordinating uh, with the Board of Health in that application. It's not complete yet, but we expect it to complete, be complete shortly, and at which point it will be filed with the town, and we'll go through the customary review process for that. Uh, really, this evening, uh, I'm really here just to respectfully request uh, a continuance to your next available hearing. Uh, we, we recently received these peer review letters. We're in the process of kind of sorting through them. We've already started to make some of the, the revisions into the plan set for the comments that are fairly straightforward. Others, as I mentioned, I just want to make sure uh, we are aligned with the intent of that comment so that when we do the plan revisions, we're doing it once and it doesn't become iterative. Uh, I'm not going to, or at least I'm not going to get into all the detail this evening because, as I mentioned, we, we got these comments just recently and I really want to have an opportunity to sit down and work with. Um, your reviewers to make sure we're on the same page. So um, again, just here to request a continuance respectfully um, to your next available discussion, at which point I think we'll be able to kind of dive in in some detail and, and you'll probably be seeing a substantial amount of updates to the plans as a result of those discussions. All right, appreciate that. Let me just, uh, we did get comments from a couple of town officials, so let me just put them out here as well. Um, one is the, uh, again, the parking spaces, and that at this point, uh, in the revisions, we want to see that those, uh, the required number of parking spaces are available, and that don't have, aren't connected to the septic or the snow removal, that they actually fit. That's, we haven't voted on the special permit yet, but let's, the next revision should assume that it's not going to get, you're not going to get the special permit, so we can see what that looks like. Okay, and just, just so I'm clear, I'm not questioning you, but so I'm clear, you want to show those as though they are proposed as part of this program and not, um, can we have them kind of ghosted out, so to speak, in the background as a potential, you want to incorporate them fully? We need to incorporate them because then that comes into the next item, which is truck access, and so um, assuming every parking spot is full of a car or a pickup truck or something, then how do trucks move around? Yeah, we, so that's really, we've assessed I think that. it's important to really maximize, to, to look at the, of course, as and it's maximized. We're happy to do that. We've assessed the vehicle. I think we may have alluded to that at a prior hearing, but um, we've done the largest delivery vehicle that could accommodate the site, which the turning movements for that are far more conservative than an emergency response vehicle, and we'll be prepared to review that with you at the mm -hmm. next hearing. And then there's uh, a lot, lot of issues around the water detention, um, and then again, including the, um, the, the right-of-way area there which if that's going to be paved, then that water has to stay on site as well. So. And then what um, I, I think now that we do, you did submit the um, traffic impact and access study um, done by um, BAI. You've been Austin Associates. Transportation yeah. Engineers Planners, okay. Um, so that's been forwarded to Ty and Bond, I believe Gene has it, and you have a specialist on your team who's going to review that. So that can, um, you, you can do some back and forth over the next couple of weeks, uh, okay. and that can go into the revisions as well. So I, so I just, I think the planning board's going to accept the request for continuation, but this is a public hearing, so I'd like to open it up for some public comment, knowing that we have reviewers that are going to answer a lot of your questions. I would love it if there's any new information. That's with public hearings. We've had several of them. We have a lot of comments, and we appreciate them. So anybody with any new comment, I would invite to, uh, sign, up the, to sign up here and, and come say something. Do we have it? Are you passing around the other? I, 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 I've got it back. It's here. Everybody it, signed in. So we have a, a sign-in sheet that's um, helpful to us uh, for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is for addresses for those who speak. Um, that's here. So if your name is not here, uh, please do put your name on the sign-in sheet. I think we might have everybody. I might just uh, take this opportunity as, as people are signing up to, um, I didn't read my statement at the beginning, but I, I see a lot of familiar faces here. And so at public meetings, we try to keep them very civil and orderly. And so we appreciate it if people make comments. Um, as, the, as the chair, I have the authority to have to, comments have to go through the chair. I, we tend to be more flexible, but um, that's probably a better way to, to do it when there's a lot of comments. Um, and again, the applicant uh, is here but said they're not going to respond to too many things. They're going to take them into consideration. And then it's the next revision, the next meeting, when I think we're going to get into a lot of the 
any changes and, and uh, whatnot. So again, looking for new comments, and thank you very much. So if you just say your name and your comments, that'd be great. Hi, my name is. You've got to get pretty close. To okay. Me. okay. My name is Denise Mason. I live in Lower Road in Deerfield, and I'm representing Deerfield for Responsible Development. Uh, John Kuhn of Kuhn Riddle Architects in Amherst has written a letter to the Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals for the town of Deerfield in which the, he outlines his thoughts on the architecture of the proposed Dollar General Store and the neighborhood at Route 5 and Mill Village Road. So I have copies of the original letter for anyone if they're interested in reading it later. Um, now I'm just going to read some important excerpts taken directly from Mr. Kuhn's letter. Um, I'm an architect in Amherst, Massachusetts, and I'm offering an opinion on the proposed dollar gen... Yeah. Okay. So you need to talk right into it, Denise. How's that? I was wondering. Okay. I'm looking at faces that are... <laughs> Let me... Should have brought my reading glasses. Okay. I'm an architect in Amherst, Massachusetts. She, she's reading a letter written by... John Kuhn. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you who he is. I know you're not an architect. Okay. Right. I've done work in South Deerfield over the course of my career and helped develop the entirety of the Yankee Candle campus in the 90s. I've been practicing in the Pioneer Valley for 40 years and have a good sense of contextual design relative to the valley and to New England in general. If the planning board approves the site plan, then the proposal will need to be submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a special permit to build a retail store larger than the $4,000 square feet allowed by right. The criteria on which, on which the special permits are judged is written as follows. Special permits may be granted to the special permit granting authority upon its written determination that benefits of the proposed use outweigh its detrimental impacts on the town and the, deer, and the neighborhood. In considering approval of a special permit, one of the stat, stated criteria is listed as follows. Neighborhood character and social structures. While these statements are broad, they do give the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals the ability to judge the merits of a special permit application based on how it blends into the surrounding area and if it's compatible and beneficial to the town and the immediate neighborhood. In my professional opinion, the Dollar General store is not in keeping with the character of this area or the town as a whole. More specifically, this is one example where the benefits of a proposal do not outweigh the detrimental impacts of the town and particularly the surrounding area, surrounding neighborhood. To be blunt, I would suggest that the design of this particular Dollar General store is horrendous. It is a, <laughs> it is a cookie cutter, formulaic design pulled off the shelf for convenience and has absolutely nothing that relates to it in the surrounding neighborhood area or region. It is not contextual, has no redeeming design character, and will ultimately, if allowed to be built as shown, be a permanent eyesore in the community. In short, there is nothing appealing about this particular design other than that it is probably cheap and constructed for the developer. I would suggest the planning board deny the application for a special permit to reduce the number of parking spaces and condition any approval of the site plan upon the development of a design for a retail facility appropriate to the site and the town pursuant to the requirement of section 5467 to minimize unreasonable departure from the character and scale of building in the vicinity as viewed from public ways. This can be achieved through thoughtful redesign of the form, character, size, and style the proposed building. It cannot be achieved with the architecture of the current design. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. Next, I don't, does everybody know what order they're in or should I, uh, actually Pat, you can help us. Uh -huh. Just a quick clarification, as, as uh, Denise mentioned, is that there is, a, if the, the planning board looks at site plan review, Bylaw uh, 5400, um, 5, the special permit is done by the ZBA, the Zoning Board of Appeals. That would be done after this process. And they look at different things that was just mentioned. So. Hi. Hi, I'm Susan Half. I live at 11B Mill Village Road. I am in a butter. Dear town officials, I'm writing to formally request that the planning board require 
Liscotti Development, the developer seeking a special permit to build a huge retail box store at Route 5 in Mill Village Road to provide high-resolution photographs of actual, standalone Dollar General stores that follow the 9,318 square foot design Liscotti is seeking to build in Deerfield. I am an abutter and resident of this neighborhood, and I would like to see this store. I would not, I would not like to see. I would have to see this store every day if the town approves the project. Since Dollar General has plans to build 900 stores in this calendar year and says it already has 14,000 stores across the United States, such photographs of newly constructed stores of this basic design should be readily available to Liscotti. These high resolution images should be of stores where no alteration has been done to the prototypical 9,318 square foot design proposed by Liscotti. They should not include images of stores in which local communities have required substantial alterations to the exterior facade or flat roof line. I ask the planning board to act on this request tonight as at this public hearing and require the developer to provide to the town administrator with electronic files that can be viewed on computers phones, and other electronic devices. These files to be shared with the planning board, zoning board, building inspector's office, and posted on the town website. These electronic photographic files should be delivered to the town administrator no later than close of business on Friday, September 14th. After the building inspector's office has verified that the images provided by Liscotti are indeed of actual buildings of the same design as the one being proposed in Deerfield and without substantial exterior facade or roofline alterations. I ask that the planning board require Liscotti to deliver large form format photographic printed copies, three feet wide by two feet high or larger, to be placed on display in town hall for public viewing. The large format photographic printed copies should be delivered within five business days of the date of verification by the building inspector's office or by September 25th, 2018, whichever date is sooner. The photographic files should include the following types of images. One, full front view of building facade from front parking area. Two, front mid-distance view of building that incorporates roadside signage. Three, full views of both side facades. Four, full rear view facade with propane tanks if available. Aerial view of roof including parking area and police slash fire access lanes. Could, Six, I, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, so this is, this is great. Is, are you going to, is there much more? I have, have two say? more lines. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Six, close up view of loading dock area. Seven, close up view of any exterior waste collection facilities. I want to thank the planning board in advance for its prompt attention to this request. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you leave that in, in yes. writing for us and we'll, we'll yep. put it on file. Thank you. Lily Dwight is the next one on the list. Thanks. Can I, can I get that? Thanks. I'm Lily Dwight of South Mill Village Road. Um, can, look, sorry, before I start. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure that we have a lot of people here. I want to make sure everybody's heard. So I, I would ask for if people could be concise, that would be terrific just to keep everybody. This is for everybody's benefit. We're here. but So I'm going to edit my letter, but I'll give you the whole thing. <laughs> okay, but I will give you the highlights. That's what I was yeah. trying to do. So I'm here to speak for the trees, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm the Lorax. Um, 
and uh, we have spoken with MassDOT, but I, I'm here to address the planning board on behalf of the trees. And um, based on the site plan review that we read, the, um, the finding was that the Deerfield zoning bylaws had not been met 5461. As you guys all know, I'm sure you've read it and you guys can all read it yourselves. So I request that the planning board require that 30 or more mature native trees as well as plantings of native, native water absorbing plant species be incorporated into any site plan as a condition of approval before passing any proposal along to the Zoning Board of Appeals for further consideration. These trees and plantings should be incorporated along the front property line of the proposed development and be in addition to all other plantings required elsewhere on the development site. I also request that the planning board condition any site plan approval with the requirement that the developer design and submit a plan to the state to address the, quote, prior removal of trees in the MassDOT right of way along Greenfield Road. An acceptable mitigation plan should seek to restore the site where the clear cutting occurred by replanting mature trees substantially similar to those that were removed without proper permits. The plan should also seek to create conditions that improve absorption of stormwater. Scenic trees are synonymous with the uniquely New England qualities that help define Deerfield's character and our rich cultural history. So I ask you to preserve and protect our scenic gateway. Thank you. Thank you. And as was pointed out, um, Pat Smith talked a lot about um, native species and uh, lid um, kinds of development, and I'm sure the next revision will have that. So, thanks. Alyssa Clement. I'm going to apologize right now because I'm probably going to mispronounce <laughs> every other person's name here. <laughs> Saving the trees. Elissa Clement, 4B Evans Lane, a butter. I'm writing to express my concerns about the inadequacy of the hastily performed traffic study undertaken in August by a firm employed by Lascotti Development, the developer seeking a special permit to build a huge retail box store at Route 5 in Mill Village. <clears throat> I'm an abutter and resident of this neighborhood and use Mill Village Road daily. In the request for co quote for engineering peer review, letter from John Wade, the proposed scope of work in part specifically cited these criteria for a traffic study. Traffic impacts at an intersection identified as a top crash location, particularly during peak hours and seasons such as on weekends, in the fall, and when school buses are operating. Delivery truck circulation on the site, security access, and bicycle and pedestrian access. Note the planning board asked the applicant to do a full traffic study based on a 9,318 square foot retail store. This should be reviewed in anticipation of a highly utilized retail store because the number of future customers is unknown, so we need to plan for the highest use. Traffic at this intersection increases markedly during the school year. Yesterday, for example, just taking my daughter to and from middle school and then back again later for a school club required me to add eight trips through this intersection. I also have a child in elementary school, which typically results in my adding at least two additional trips to my day along this route. Other parents who have children in Deerfield schools have similar daily experiences. Failure one, the traffic impact and access study prepared for the Scotty development by Vanessa and Associates of Andover, Massachusetts was based on data obtained in August before children returned to school and when no school buses were transporting Deerfield school children. Failure two, the study also seeks to downplay the very dangerous traffic conditions that exist at the intersection of Route 5, Mill Village Road, and North Main Street. Yet in doing so, the study only bolsters the valid fears of residents have expressed for the safety of their children who often ride bicycles in that area. The section titled Motor Vehicle Crash Data reads in part, it is noted that a fatality was reported at this location in July of 2015 involving a collision between a motorist and bicyclist. Indeed, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation has classified this intersection as a top crash location. You can see the uh, attached page showing that. 
the Vanessa and Associates study fails to meet the criteria, quote, in the fall and when school buses are operating, end quote, set out in the planning board's RFQ, and it does not accurately reflect annual traffic or public safety conditions at this location. Conclusion, this report must be rejected and replaced by an independent study performed by a traffic engineering firm that has no current or previous relationship with Scotty Development, Dollar General, Bowler Engineering, or any of their associates. Thank you. Thank you. And as, um, as we stated earlier that this, their traffic study had just came um, in the past couple of days, so it has not been reviewed. It will be reviewed by uh, the peer review hired by the town. So, um, and I would just add on to that, um, Austin, we had a comment from a town official about uh, if people were coming into this site, if, uh, if they were coming down Mill Village Road, they would have to take a left across traffic, go just a few feet and then take another left across more traffic to go into this. And, and that they had some concerns about that. So I hope that's addressed uh, also in the, in the traffic study. So I, I would just concur with some of the things that you just heard. Uh, and I can give you a copy of the slider if you want. Sure, that'd be great. But um, yeah. about, you know, we, we, we need to look at this when it's the most traffic on the road during the fall, is when schools are in session, the leaf peepers are out, all that. It gets much more crowded than it was a couple weeks ago. So, next. The next speaker is Tim Hilchi. Here. I have a copy. Oh. I also will uh, try to reduce this for public consumption. Sure. I have copies for you. <clears throat> My name's Tim Hilchi. I live at 330 Greenfield Road. Sorry, my name is Tim Hilchi. I leave at 330 Greenfield Road. I'm writing to urge the planning board to reject Lascotti Development's site plan and special permit applications based on the findings outlined in the Franklin Regional Council of Government's peer review report, which also calls into question a traffic study performed in August 2018 when school was not in session. Residents who, now, who own abutting properties and the public at large are being asked to comment on plans that are missing major elements required by state law and by Deerfield's bylaws, for example, compliance with state green dot rules that state, quote, private developers that access state-owned highway are required to design, build, and operate their projects in a manner that encourages and seeks to increase walking, bicycling, and transit use. The peer review report prepared by Patricia A. Smith, Senior Land Use Planner at the Franklin Council, Regional Council of Governments, cites among other, uh, among many others, the following major deficiencies in the current incomplete plans. Elements that either do not meet or partially meet Deerfield's relevant zoning bylaws or state laws. This is where I will condense. Items not met, section 3120, section 5431, yeah, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Um, partially met Can another I've list of things. So, The deficiencies cited here represent fewer than half of the more than 20 defects identified in the Franklin Regional Council of Government's review of the developer site plan application. The FERCOG review also raises serious doubts about the adequacy of the traffic impact and access study prepared for Lascotti development by Vanass and Associates of Andover, Mass. The FERCOG review states, quote, the traffic should take into account recent and planned development along the Route 510 corridor, including the new Cumberland Farms and Ideal Movers self-storage facility. In addition, traffic counts should be taken during the school year at times during the day when school buses are operating. The developer's TID, TIA study uh, failed to do that. The developer's site plans and supporting traffic environmental and engineering studies are incomplete, inadequate, and in a state of flux. And as the FERCOG report points out, many of the submissions are not even signed and many are, of the required fees have not been paid. Under these circumstances, it's impossible to have an informed public discussion of the current application. I therefore formally request that the planning board immediately reject the developer's current site plans and all special permit applications related to this proposal. Thank you. If 
I might, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to clarify that when I did my report, the Van Ass traffic impact study was not out. I was uh, responding to the previous two-page uh, information that had been provided. Some of those comments still stand, but it, it was not in response specifically to the full traffic study that has been done. Thanks. And the next speaker is uh, Bill Marapisi. So, Mr. Chairperson, since you asked for new um, and we don't have some uh, answers, I'd like to hold until the next meeting. Thank uh, you, Bill. Great. Thank you. Uh, next would be Deb Underhill. I just want to ask you, are those hats going to be for sale at some point out in the lobby? Or? Yes. Oh, okay. Just checking. Hi, um, I'm Deborah Underhill. I live, come at, right up to the mic. I live at 26 right A Mill the, Village Road. Is that right, right up to the mic? Can you start over? Just start yes. again, but just pull it towards you so you don't you don't feel awkward. But okay, there. how's that? Okay, better. More. I'll try to speak up. Just pull it closer to you. One more, one more inch closer to you, and you'll get it. Okay. Um, Deborah Underhill, 26 A Mill Village Road. I'm in a butter. Dear town officials, I want to thank the planning board for making use of independent peer consultants during the process of reviewing and evaluating the proposal to build a huge Dollar General retail store on Route 5 and Mill Village Road. I believe an independent source of information is critical to a complete and accurate evaluation of any proposed work. In the spirit of transparency and open communication, I request that a public list be provided of A, all engineering consulting firms approached by the board to perform independent studies or reviews, B, a final list of engineers consulted selected by the board, and C, the planned review tasks to be assigned to each of the engineers consultants, slash consultants. These lists could be posted on the town website and made available as handouts at town hall. I also request that these lists be accompanied by a description of the process used to verify that each engineer slash consultant selected to perform work is truly independent from South Deerfield DG LLC, Liscotti Development Corp, Bowler Engineering, and Dollar General. I thank the board members in advance for their attention to this request. Thank you. I can just quickly tell you that uh, I believe six requests for proposals were sent out to a list that we have in the town hall of about 20 different engineering firms, and we selected ones that also have good uh, traffic engineers. Um, we only received two actual proposals. The, a couple others said reasons why they couldn't do it. They were busy, things like that. Um, and and we, uh, we selected the one that we thought um, both staff and myself thought were uh, going to do the best job. That's um, the other information that you asked for is public record, and I think you can check with the town hall and um, either Priscilla or Diana Schindler, actually, who is the uh, administrative assistant part-time, is handling the Dollar General paperwork and everything. Okay. And Priscilla is doing all of our other work. And are they vetted to be sure they are truly independent in some way? How it, I, I don't know how to answer that, so I won't. Okay. I mean, maybe they they should have to, you know, at least declare that they have no um, no conflict or business with any of those other firms. We we do uh, hire uh, well experienced referenced organizations who, if they had conflicts, um, I, I would suggest they wouldn't be in business as much as they are. Um, right, I so I, I'm not exactly does, sure, but yeah. if you had ways to, if you have ways you think we could vet, then I'd, you could write them down and send them to us or something. I, I think the town has a list that we've used before. Other towns have used. Um, okay. Private people use them. You can't, you know, people all work for different people. So I'm not sure what you would look for. But if you have a good way of doing it, please let us well, know. Well, I just think um, we don't need to discuss that tonight. Okay. Just let us know. Thanks. Next. Julie, <laughs> Julie, we'll just. Okay. Um, I did bring this up one other time, but I wanted to just fine tune it. The bridge on North Main Street, I think, is still not accepting large loads for trucks and buses. 
And so that means um, D3 has to wind its way some way down to the center of town, possibly. D3 being the, oh, the school bus. Oh, the D3 bus, school bus. Instead of um, going up over the bridge and then to that intersection and going up to North Hillside for the high school route, they have to go a different route right now. And the one that comes from the west part of the um, town can't go over that bridge, though they either have to take a right to get there. And then also in the morning, there's an additional bus that's been coming. I don't know which one it is, but I think it's the one that's going on the east, uh, the east side of town that goes over uh, North Hillside to avoid um, the bridge that's no longer to be used. And the reason why I mention this is because people will be skipping that intersection once a light goes in there. And I had asked or requested for a, a, uh, a traffic study for the North Hillside, the Hillside to North Hillside, because that, that will get increased because um, I've seen the increase over years just in people to avoid town. And I expect that that will, um, if the company could also review the traffic there, that would be very helpful. I'm not clear on what the request was. Is anybody else? Could someone um, do a traffic study over on the hillsides to see the impact of that? Because that's going to increase. Also, an additional study. Okay, thanks for the request. Thank you. And then also to note that um, the traffic study will, once that um, North Main Street um, bridge is actually fixed, there's going to be additional traffic at that point because larger loads will be able to go over that bridge again, whereas they're not going right now, I think. Thank you. Lori Busada. Lori Busada, North Main Street. I ride my bike past the intersection um, twice a day. I just wanted to add that the character of the neighborhood is not just visual. There are no buildings, no stores operating after 7 o'clock at night when Atlas Farm closes, except for on the northern border of town, the Deerfield um, the gas station and the Deerfield liquor store. There is nothing in our neighborhood open at that time. There is also no retail establishments that are larger than 5,000 approximately 5,000 square feet. Um, the long-standing old uh, Deerfield Country Store and Richardson's Candy Kitchen are in that 5,000 square foot range. This store is quite a bit larger that is proposed, very much out of character with the neighborhood. I'm also concerned with uh, trip count being characterized as a variety store. I'm not sure what that is. I know we have several convenience stores. It is definitely not a specialty store. Richardson's Candy Kitchen, Sheep and Shawl, Wool Allergy, those are specialty stores. There is nothing special sold at Dollar General. <laughs> Darren, uh, Darren Gray is next on the list. Hello. Um, I wanted to underscore the, the critical nature of the groundwater, the seasonal high groundwater on this site. Uh, it really drives the size of that infiltration basin. It drives the size of that septic field. Uh, we've obviously not seen the, the deep hole test pin information that's been requested. Um, there's been some confusion about the, the soils in the drainage reports. It was listed as D, but then used as C in the calculations. Um, I request that an independent observer be hired to go out there for an hour while they're doing the deep hole test pits and observing the, the modeling of the soils to confirm that that's all agreeable, I guess. Um, yeah, because if both in this, that could drastically change the layout. It could affect the layout of this parking lot. It could affect the layout, how large those two um, pieces of infrastructure are. It could really drive the site layout in which uh, Mr. Turner was talking about not wanting to be iterative about the designs. It would be great to get that nailed down soon and get the septic design done soon so we can then really see what the site design is going to be. Because right now, without that, this whole geometry could change. Um, let's see. Another thing, segmentation of a project. Um, if you're, 
if you're going to go for a wetlands permit, you can't do part of a development now and have some wetlands impacts and come back a couple years later and do more. They want it all at once. The way these trees were taken down, I, I feel like we're always talking about two separate things here. But to me, this should all be encompassed in one process. Um, until we know what's going on with the DOT, what they're going to do to mitigate the impact. Like, what are we talking about here? We don't have a full site plan yet. We don't have a full design yet. It's all part of the same project. And, and what we've been, I feel, I know some of it's on the DOT, some of it's on the town, but until it's all looked at as one thing, we're segmenting a project, and that's a no-no in permitting, in, in my mind and in my experience. Um, and then I'm, I wonder if the, um, I'm just wondering if anyone from Dollar General is ever going to show up at one of these meetings. I know that's not yours to do, but I'm just, I'm just wondering it. If anyone's ever going to come here and speak about the store that's knowledgeable. Um. Thank you. Can I just ask a question? The, um, you talked about observer. What, what do you have in mind? Um, I know our, our building inspector or health inspector could probably do it. Is that? An in, a, a certified soil scientist, I would think. So is that something that you guys could arrange, Diane Bond, to be there yes. and do it, do it at the same time the applicant is? We have um, soil evaluators on staff. All right, great. And then the, uh, the other thing is there's some question about the CONCOM um, doing their evaluation, the, the NOI, so we call it? Yeah, NOI. That, that they did, um, we've been told that um, they were okay with everything. This was back in the spring. We haven't been able to find that in writing um, since the, as you mentioned, the um, some things have changed on the site. We're, we're kind of talking to them about whether they need to go back and look at it again. Um, just so you know, the CONCOMS has some, had some changes in personnel recently, so, and they're, they're looking at several other projects, but we're trying to get them oh. back involved. As you mentioned it, I have the <laughs> idea right here. And? Um, I've also spoken to the circuit rider, Mark, Mark Stinson, at the Western Mass DEP about this, um, just to try to really understand what was permitted back in, I think, 2016. So this was submitted. It was supposed to be a storage facility at the time. It very clearly shows the property lines and says the acreage within the property lines doesn't account for any work outside the property lines. So as uh, outlined in some of the peer reviews, we have work for the driveway outside the property lines. Those stumps, you grub those stumps out, that's disturbance. Per letter of the Wetlands Protection Act, that's disturbance. Um, we've heard about poor soils. It was one of the more funny exchanges, I think, in all these hearings when uh, someone on the applicant team talked about poor soils and, you know, some residents were joked about, hey, we're proud of our soils, and we are. Um, but these D soils, these poorly drained soils, they're indicative of hydric soils. That's one of the indicators of a wetland. Um, I'm not, I don't know if there are wetlands out there, but I do think since we do have these other areas of disturbance that have to happen as part of this non-segmented project, I do think this should go back to the CONSCOM. The, there are areas outside of this RDA that are now part of this project. They should get another look at it. Um, and I have other comments when it goes there for how that gets reviewed. Thank you. But, and I have, this is Darren. I've sent Gene your emails. And so if you guys have a chance to talk, that would be terrific too. Sure, yeah, and I'll, um, I'll write, I didn't write doing writing, but I can send you an email. All right, that'd be, well. be great. This, right. Um, through the chair, if there's going to be conversations with your peer reviewer and on technical matters, I'd like to be a part of that discussion as well. Well, you'll certainly get the, yeah, I mean, this is the public's informing us and our sure. peer reviewer, and then they'll yeah. put something in, in a memo to you. Yeah, I'd like Absolutely. to be a part of any conversations directly. That's all I'm suggesting, because it's, it's directly going to impact me, so if they're communicating. Well, it'll get, it'll get to you. Right, you're not, right. they're yeah. not part of the board. They, uh, no, I, I understand. Yeah. Uh, but it would uh, be helpful if I'm hearing that firsthand as well. You have the right to request public record. Uh, um, all right, next. Uh, are we doing on uh, Amy, we? Gaz, and Schwartz, and then there are three more people. All right, so again, looking for new information whenever possible. Amy Gazen Schwartz, uh, 3B Mill where do I live? 3B Evans Lane. Um, I don't actually have a lot of new information, so I'm not going to. I'll be quick. But what I do have is, I do have letters um, about a number of issues that have already been discussed: tree cutting, uh, stormwater disposal, wastewater disposal, traffic, um, 
pedestrian safety, all of those kinds of things. And they're signed by myself and 10 of my neighbors, very many of whom are either abutters or the neighbors of abutters. So I just want to give you all of those letters. Most of them are requesting independent studies. Um, Ty and Bond has already done addressed some of the questions that we have. Are, th are these letters you've submitted already? I have not yet submitted these letters. You have other letters from me. You've got dozens of letters. We have others, yes. <laughs> this is from, these are from my neighbors. Okay. But I'm, I'm charged with submitting them. Thank so. you. And I'll, I'll just uh, restate something that I said at the last public hearing, which is the, the um, poorly drained soils and the significant coverage of those poorly drained soils will not only impact the land that the building is being built on, but may well impact the three large leach fields that uh, Mill Village's Condominium Association has directly abutting this property directly abutting it. There's three. So I think that that should be part of the consideration in um, dealing with all of this water runoff issues. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Bruce Hunter. Um, I'd like to uh, follow up with the f person that spoke about photographic um, requests for photos. So is this new information you're this bringing? This is new information. Um, as I looked at the grading plan, um, the, the height of the building is approximately 20 feet, including the parapet. With the abutting houses, directly abutting houses, the parapet is higher than the peaks of most of the abutting houses. I would strongly suggest that sections be provided to show the relationship of abutting property, abutting homes to the existing site. A six foot fence with an eight foot tree uh, shrub is not going to um, allow the abutters to only, allow them only to see the, the top of the building. Um, noise, I'm not sure, um, was addressed in the administrative review. I didn't have a copy of it, so I wasn't sure. Um, the reason I ask that is because they should, they should show the location of their um, roof-mounted, um, either the, their air handlers or HVAC systems, um, and what, what the noise relationship would be uh, to the abutters, because those are going to run 24-7. Um, the, uh, one of the last items is I didn't hear that an oil water separator was proposed. Uh, was that mentioned? Okay. So that needs to be included in, in, in the, uh, the project. And um, I do have a, a general question. Um, if a member of the planning board is, does not attend all the public hearings, are they allowed to vote? on the project? There, there is specific um, guidelines on that and, and we will adhere to them. Thank you. I, I don't have it in front of me, but... Anybody else? Yes. Mark Vallon. Mark Vallon. Hello. Hello. Just... Um, yeah, will you, will you go on? Um, Who are you looking for? Amy, Amy, you're, uh, the letters you submitted with the signatures of neighbors were, I, I have them in the packet, they were received in the town hall on August 17th. They look, they look the same, but, all right. Thanks. Yep. Sorry. That's it. Uh, my name is Mark Fallone, 103 South Mill River Road. So in regards to everything that has been said tonight, I understand that the, according to the bylaws um, in John Kuhn's expert um, opinion, that the site, the building is too large for the existing bylaws. So as an alternative to this location that uh, Dollar General is proposing, 
Would an alternative location such as the prior Cumberland Farms in the center of town be more appropriate for such a structure that wouldn't maybe create so much um, public outcry, number one? Number two, all of the um, engineering and um, scientific studies and everything that can be overcome with um, proper engineering, proper study, and the planning board would be um, obligated to approve the site. I say that in the beginning, the removal of the trees was not on the site that is being studied. The removal of the trees was from the state. The select board has already requested the state to replace the trees. I think that if those trees were not removed, that this site wouldn't work for Dollar General, that it would block all the visibility of it, and that the trees were removed for a purpose exactly to make it um, visible and for everybody in town, um, ugly and unappealing. And so I would request that the trees be replaced as the select board already has to the state, according to the last uh, select board meeting, the trees be replaced, that they're allowed to grow back to their full height where they were before we study and uh, even, even um, you know, decide whether or not this site is the site plan approval be allowed. That the trees are really more important than people are taking into account. Not for the water, not for the drainage, not for the traffic, but that if the trees weren't removed, this site wouldn't work in the first place and that the trees were removed illegally and so pick a different site. And I request that the planning board deny this uh, site approval plan based on those, that subject. Thank you. Thanks. So next we have Gina Cowley, and there's been a 15th individual that has added their name, if you would allow that after that. Hi. Hi there. Uh, Gina Cowley, 213 Greenfield Road, The Rock Fossil Dinosaur Shop. Um, I'm going to be really quick, but um, at the last August um, hearing, I had brought up the fact that um, after the trees had all been clear cut, uh, that the shop that I own had um, been getting a lot of water in it. and. Um, I had requested at that last meeting to have a conversation with um, the independent engineering company to at least voice my opinion as an abutter and to talk about the amount of water that is now um, not only um, going into the shop itself but also in the back where all the, the wood chips are and they're kind of floating around and being displaced. There is a, a drain system there in the parking lot, but it can't handle the amount of water now that's being flown or into, into that area, into the parking lot. So essentially, um, after each rainstorm, uh, we're getting a lot of water coming in to the back area. Um, so I would hope that we could have a conversation about how that's impacting. I don't know if it's impacting other abutters, but it, it's definitely impacting us. And, you know, I called the town administrator, Wendy, who was really helpful, and I let her know about the water coming in. And I also wrote a letter to Mass DOT and to the, um, the state rep. So because I, I have no idea how this is going to get... Um, remedied. But all I know is that there's a ton of water coming in and there's no way to stop it at this point. So. Thank you. Could Thanks. you um, 
give us your contact information and maybe give it directly to Jean, and that when you guys come back up to do your other work, you could make try to sure thing. try to come visit yeah. the neighbor. Right, I do have videos and and pictures of of the wa the amount of flow of water from that lot coming in now. It's it's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. So they're the abutter right on five and ten. Right. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks. Holly Stark. Good evening. My name is Tolly Stark. I'm also representing Deerfield for Responsible Development. Closer to the mic? Yeah. Just pull it right clo right close to you. Gladly. How's that? Can you all hear me? Okay, excellent. So I also have a letter that has concerns about the wetland issue and recent flooding. I'm going to spare you all because it's late, so I'm not going to read it, but I will give you a copy. You guys can... And this is, this is a new one? This is a new one. Thanks. <laughs> um, and I also just quickly wanted to ask um, a few things. One is, um, is the handicapped parking adequate for this site? It, Has it there been any address will to be that? before it got approved. That's, that's one of our requirements. But is the current site plan, is it adequate, the current site plan, do we know? I'm not sure it hasn't been reviewed because we're waiting for revisions. Okay. This, for the record, it, it's been designed with AAB and a, ADA standards, right. so it is consistent with both. Oh, good. Thanks. Okay. And then I also wanted to address the um, snow removal issue with the current site plan. So um, when you look at the site plan, the snow removal, um, they... New, because the peer reviewers already made, both, I think, made comments about this. So. Yeah, there's actually one thing that wasn't mentioned, okay. um, and I didn't see it in the written peer review, but I thought I'd bring it to attention. So the um, front of the store that faces 5 and 10 in the site plan, there are um, plants and small shrubs, and that is also where the snow is supposed to be removed to. And I don't know how you plow through shrubs to remove snow, but... I just want to say that that's obviously something that should be looked at. Um, the other stuff has pretty much already been echoed, so I'll spare you, but I know it's late, and there is also the option within the zoning bylaws that we currently have for this board to vote and deny the site plan as it is. And then if they would like, they're welcome to come and submit a new site plan. But as of right now, we see all the errors in it, and you have plenty of standing to vote this site plan down. Thank you. Thank you. Just so people know, our normal procedure is to um, get applications, have them reviewed, give feedback, um, uh, take, take time for comment, and make revisions. Um, so that's the, that's the process we follow. Someone else earlier mentioned that site plan review is, a, uh, is something that the planning board, the, the main thing we look at is to try to make things fit, uh, well, to make sure they fit our bylaws and give uh, applicants an opportunity to do so. Um, it's a lot different than a special permit. I just want to reemphasize that, that the ZBA has a lot more flexibility on, on denying a special permit. Uh, if something does not fit into the, if it's, uh, if the benefits don't outweigh the detriments, I believe is the language. Whereas that's different for a site plan review, so. Anybody else, Pat? No, that's it. Site plan review could require the trees to Plan. They are not on the plan. I just looked at it up there, so I don't want that to slide by here. There are no. Trees. There is. Um, I'm sorry. We already had the public comment. I will mention that there is 5461. That's part of the site plan review, which is about minimizing the volume of cut and fill and the number of trees. So that is something that the planning board does look okay. at. So, as we, uh, so the planning board members, anything, comments at this point? Planning board members. I will be concise. I'm, I'm sorry, we, we're finished with public comment no, if you haven't not. signed up. You do this to me every time I come down here and I'm going to speak. I paid taxes in this town for 70 years. I will be heard. Hi, folks. Sorry. Into the mic, please. 
The mic's no good either. For 25 years it hasn't been any good. <laughs> it doesn't work because of the acoustics of this room and damn columns. Anyway, my name is Phil Allen. I live on Hillside Road with my lovely wife, Jenny. We really enjoy all that traffic that Julie just told you guys about. I do want a traffic count also on all three roads up here so we have some idea what's going on. These guys, I'll talk to you. They don't want to see me. They don't want to hear me. Excuse me. I, I'm going to ask that you're just a little bit more respectful of our board here. I, I'm just, I'm happy to be here and listen to you. I am not disrespecting you at all. So if you could keep your comments at a place that's... I appreciate e your statement. What is it you're offending you, Miss? Just, we would like to hear what you have to say as well. Thank you. Well, thank you. It, I, I want to ask that you use a microphone, that you sign the list everybody else has. This one works? Now? Yes. Maybe this one. Very, very intermittent. But, uh, what, what did I sign for my wife and I? Is it two lists going on? This was asked by the current response. Thank you. Development. Okay, Mr. Wade, I will be concise at your request. I can cut my 44 pages down to about two. If you folks will go home tonight and tomorrow, look up Dollar General on your computer. You'll come back with shovels and baseball bats. There's nothing good there. They're not good for us, they're not good for anybody. They've got an agenda that has nothing to do with what's good for Deerfield. I'm gonna read the list here. Oh boy. 70 years in this town, 50 on Hillside Road. We've been confronted by this situation before, as I said. I'm keeping it concise, John. Why do we live in this town? We love it. We take care of it. It's quality life and good character of the people that are in it. That's important. Where else are you going to go and find it? That's why we're here. That's why others want to come here. The lady said 1,500 stores in 45 states. They open three every day in the U.S. of A. Think about that's more than McDonald's. We don't need it. It's all about the principle, the tactics, the values, and what we live for. This is our town. We need to control this. I don't know if the laws are up to par to protect us, and if not, we better change them quickly. We had a show of hands in here, two meetings back, maybe three. A gentleman brought up a very democratic process. He said, how many folks don't want this? I got it backwards. How many people do, how many people don't? Nobody put their hand up desiring to have this. And they said, how many don't want it? Everybody put their hand up. Gee, that's a pretty powerful statement. I'd like to ask this board the same question. Put up a show of hands what you want it or you don't want it, because I'm hearing things I don't like. And the body language tells me a great deal, Mr. Kamosa. We're supposed to be impartial. Oh yeah, I see that. And there's a lot of clever ways to manipulate, manipulate the partial. I'm getting excited again, and I promised my wife I wouldn't. All right. <laughs> We're ready. Is that all? Excuse me? Is that all? You want to pull a plug again. Is that what you're doing? I, I want to let people go home. We're going to continue this hearing. I don't know if you were here for that part of the meeting. That We're going to continue it, so there'll be another opportunity to speak. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. All right. Thanks. So thank, what we need to thank do is you folks. Thanks. So what we um, need to do is uh, select another date for the continuation of this. Um, how long? I'm looking at Pat and Jean and Austin. How long do you think um, we'll need to to get both the traffic study and make revisions on this plan and, and go back and forth a little bit? I, I can't speak for them, obviously, but we're, we've already started to revise the drawings on the comments that you know, are, are straightforward, um, and I'm going to be working with them Thursday of next week to go through them in detail. We'll be bringing kind of our working set and have a working session with that. I suspect we can turn those comments around relatively quickly uh, as to their schedules. I'll certainly let them speak for them, and I want to give them the appropriate time to review revised information. He is commenting that um, he will be meeting with the peer reviewer to go point by point 
um, as well as uh, the, the technical peer reviewer, as well as the, um, um, as well as the FERCOG reviewer, Ms. Smith. Thank you, Rachel. So our next, well, we have a special um, planning board meeting next Monday night on the 17th for another solar project. And then our next meeting after that will normally be October 1st, the first Monday of the month. Um, does anybody know if that's a holiday? <laughs> it's Massachusetts, it's probably somewhere. It's not Halloween, it's Halloween. <laughs> Oh, we already can't give us a month break between meetings. Uh, October 12th. So, um, so then we get into uh, if, if we're not, if, if October 1st is too soon, then we'd go into um, November 8th. Which is No, November. Wasn't that the time we switched it to? Oh, sorry. Oh, someone can't make it. No, hold on. We just went through this one. I know, sorry. So we haven't picked a date? So Veterans Day is that one, so we're going to go with the. Yes. The eighth is not a So November 8th, or it would be, you have to find another date. We just don't know. 8th is but as you can see, sometimes it's hard to get, without our normal uh, hours, it's hard to get a quorum sometimes, and we don't want to mm -hmm. schedule something and not get a quorum. Mm -hmm. so what we could work toward the 8th. And there is, there is um, question whether one of our members that are here tonight, he's missed some other meetings, whether he's been able to review all the... Yeah, John, can I say something? Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say, my name is John Baronis, and I haven't been at the meetings the past five or six months because I've been working nights down in Springfield. It's uh, not that I've been purposely avoiding them, it's just that I can't be here because like many of us, most of you, you have jobs and well this year it's required me to work summer uh, nights during the summer months down in Springfield. So I do apologize to everybody in the town for not being here and I'll do whatever I can to get up to speed to become a voting member for this. Okay, thanks. Thanks, John. So we could do a continuation until November 8th, and if, if that doesn't work, we can make another date. But um, I think at this point, it's better to make a date. I, I, no, I think we should continue, continue to a date certain, yeah. time and date certain. So November 8th is fine with me, uh, provided that's okay with your consulting team as well. It's okay. Yeah, yeah that's date. good. Okay. All right, so um, I would ask all, uh, residents to pay attention to our website in case there is a change, um, but at this point we'll, we'll uh, we just actually did the solar at railroad yard at, um, we just said that would be 7 o'clock on the 8th, so this will be at, um, maybe we better say 8 o'clock, it sounds like that railroad yard is going to be more than a half hour. Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> 8 o'clock on the 8th. Get your sleep before that. Thank you very much. Is there any other... Um, Business before the board? We did the ANR. Yep. I think we're good unless somebody has something. I move that we adjourn this Yeah, I'm right. Um, that was a great Any other discussion? Um, vote to adjourn? Yeah. Aye. 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 Aye.